Hey Wargamers, I'm Mike from Epic Duck Studios, and today I'm going to be continuing work on the Metallic Salamander. In the previous video, I showed how to get a metallic green base coat using an airbrush. In this video, I'll be detailing the model. I'm going to begin with Game Color Black, which is going to be used primarily for the shoulder pads, backpack, and bolter. Now, a quick note on the backpack, if I'd thought ahead, the entire backpack is going to be painted black by the time I'm done here. And if I put a little forethought into assembling this model, I would have just left the backpack off and painted it entirely separate. Because I went ahead and assembled the whole thing in my haste, I'm going to have to kind of paint over the green finish, and the green finish is actually quite glossy. Now, the Vallejo black is also quite glossy itself. You'll see that it's going on quite shiny, and it stays shiny even after it's dried. This isn't really preferable. I mean, I do want a matte black for this. So later on, after this video, I'm going to go ahead and spray the entire model with an anti-shine varnish. For those who are wondering, I'll be using Army Painter Matte Varnish in a rattle can for that. So here I'm just working my way around the model, painting both of the shoulder pads while being sure to leave the trim as bright green. The black doesn't go on in a perfect coat, and I'm going to have to basically make a second pass at each shoulder pad to make sure it's a good even coverage with no green showing through. The same will be true of the backpack when I get there as well. Now with the bolter, I really just want the casing to be black. The rest I'm going to paint using gunmetal afterwards. Painting the backpack is definitely the trickiest part of this, mostly because I don't want to get paint on other parts of the model, like the back of his head, his back, the shoulder pad trim, etc. So it just takes a little bit of dedication to make sure I don't slip up and make mistakes while I'm doing this. This is definitely why I say it would have been easier to leave the backpack off and paint it separately, especially because it doesn't need any of the green color that I base coated in the previous video. Chances are though, if you're new to the hobby, you probably got really excited and put all your models together, maybe even played a few games with them before you went ahead and started painting. And so you may be starting from this fully built state anyway. So hopefully this is also informative but maybe also shows you what not to do in the future. Now I'm also going to use the black to paint the accordion joints in the armor. This is the back of the knees, the elbows, and sort of the hip areas of the Space Marine. This is, I call them accordion joints because it kind of looks like an accordion. They fold up and retract to allow the Space Marine some movement. And I'm just going to paint them black just so they stand out from the green armor around them. Alternatively, if you want to be a little bit lazy, you can just let them stay the green color and maybe just apply an extra coat of wash to darken them a little bit. Alright, now I'm going to bust out Vallejo Game Color Gunmetal Metal and start base coating the metal aspects, mostly the bolter, and a few little details in the backpack. This is equivalent to old bolt gun metal or lead belcher in the new paint range. I'm also going to use this for the straps on the Space Marine's chest. They kind of go all the way around towards the backpack. Now depending on what Space Marine you're painting, you may or may not have these. And they're also a little bit hard to reach because they are kind of in behind the backpack and behind the bolter. So what I really recommend is just focus on the parts you can see easily and also the parts you can reach easily. And again, if I left the backpack off, I could reach them a whole lot easier. So lesson learned, right? Now, when you're painting hard to reach areas, it's kind of important to think about your use of the model. If it's going to be on a tabletop among 50 other very similar models, one or two little details missed here or there, especially when they're kind of tucked in behind a bolter or something, aren't really going to ever be noticed. And so you can kind of cut corners or just ignore those. 
It's really up to you how much time you want to spend hunting and trying to paint the tiny little hard to reach bits. Now, if you're expecting your model to be judged or, you know, looked at really, really closely, maybe it's a command character that people are going to kind of want to pick up and look at, put a little more effort into those hidden or hard to find details. But when it's one guy in a giant blob squad, if you don't paint the strap that's right behind his bolter anyway, no one's going to really care. Unless, of course, you care, and then go right ahead and do it. Anyway, so I'm working on the bolter now, and basically I'm going to paint every part of the bolter that's not black with the gunmetal metal. So it's everything that's been left green at this point. Again, in hindsight, it probably would have made more sense to paint the entire bolter in the metal color and then just paint the black parts over that because black is almost always guaranteed to give good coverage, whereas metallic paints tend to be a little bit more translucent. Now I'm just picking out hoses and vents on the backpack to make it less flat, black, and boring. Now I'm going to work on a few parts of gold trim on this model, and to do that I'm going to base coat those areas first with Averlin Sunset. This makes a really good base coat for gold paint, because gold paint itself tends to be a little bit on the translucent side, and the green would likely show through. Whereas the Averlin Sunset is a gold-like kind of color, it's more of like a mustard, but it does make a really really good base coat that the gold applies over very easily. Also Averlin Sunset is basically a one coat paint, it goes on nice and quick and is very opaque. So I don't have to worry about any bleed through of the base green color kind of coming up through it. There's not a lot of parts on this model I'm going to be applying this to. There's basically the studs right here on his left knee pad, one or two little details on the bolter, and the chest emblem on the Space Marine, which is kind of tucked in behind the bolter as well and kind of hard to see. I'm also going to be base coating the face guard part of his helmet with this color. Mostly just to break up the kind of sea of green happening in this model and just bring a little bit of different color into it. I realized after I did that that with the green head, the black shoulders, and the sort of gold tinted beak type shape on the helmet, he ended up really looking like a mallard to me and I found that really funny, especially being Epic Duck Studios. It was completely unintentional and I just kind of love it now. I took the inspiration for doing this gold faceplate from the Forge World website where some of the Salamander Space Marines actually do have a gold faceplate on the front of their helmet. So there was some logic behind it besides accidentally making a mallard based Space Marine.
I just realized I forgot to paint a few details on the helmet with gunmetal, so that's the little tubes on the side and the... whatever you want to call it, the little round details where the ears are. So I'm going to just go ahead and paint those now. With the Averland Sunset base coating done, I'm going to apply a coat of Gehenna's Gold over top of that. Gehenna's Gold, for whatever reason, always looks a little bit red to me on the palette, but it really doesn't go on the model that way. I'm not sure what it is about that paint where it just doesn't look the same on the palette as it does on the model, but it looks fine once it's over the Averland Sunset. Now I'm going to begin painting the Space Marines eye lenses. I've chosen to paint them in red, and you'll see I break out a couple different colors to do that. Now with the Salamanders, there's some argument as to whether their eye lenses should be red or yellow. Since I've already painted a significant amount of the helmet in gold though, I felt yellow lenses would just kind of get lost against that. So I decided to go with red for contrast. So I'm going to go a little bit nuts on these eyes and use a lot of colors to really build up the color. I'm going to begin with a base coat of Mephist in red. I'm also going to use a little bit of the Avalon Sunset already on my palette, some Yukaro Orange, finally a little bit of your Yellow, and finish it off with tiny dots of Moro White. Now Moro White is just the white paint I had on hand, literally any white paint will work just fine. So my most controlled brush stroke is moving from left to right with my right hand. So when I'm painting eyes, I like to make sure that is the motion I'm making all the time. So you'll see I flip the model over and over again, basically to make sure I'm always moving from left to right. So always from a corner of the eye towards the middle. Now with the Mephist and Red base coat down, I'm going to paint roughly half of the lens in Yokero Orange. This is going to be most concentrated towards the inside corner of the lens and kind of fade a little bit out as it reaches the back of the eye. I'm now going to repeat the same process with Averland Sunset, making just a slightly tinier spot this time. And once again, kind of repeating it with Uriel Yellow, focusing really towards the center of the bright spot. Now the last detail I'm going to paint on each eye is two little small dots of white. One is going to be in the center of the bright spot just to really make it brighten up. The other is going to be towards the back of the eye lens to give the impression of some refracting light exiting. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Blood Letter Glaze and just go over the different shades of red and yellow I've applied to the eye, just to kind of tie them all together. This is a process known as filtering, and basically by using a thin glaze over a bunch of different colors, you kind of help bind them together because the glaze applies its hue to everything underneath it, and it just makes them look more consistent and as if they're gradual steps of the correct colors. I'm being careful here not to just swamp the eye with the blood letter glaze, I'm really just applying a very thin coat of it over the different eye colors. 
Now I want to do something about the black backpack and shoulders because they are very flat aside from being glossy. So I'm going to basically highlight them using some Vallejo Cold Grey. Now with the backpack I've got the option to do some dry brushing because there's not a lot of detail painted on it yet. So I'm going to take a bigger bushier brush, load it up with paint and blot most of it away on just a piece of cloth. That's my preferred method of dry brushing rather than using paper towel just because I find it less wasteful. Now you can see I've actually got a lot of paint left on the brush. It's actually still quite heavy and still quite wet. So what I'm going to do afterwards, because this is going on just a little bit lighter than I had intended it, is I'm going to then wash the entire backpack with Nuln Oil just to darken it back down again and really kind of bring the black back out. I forgot to record a snapshot of the bottle, but this is Nuln Oil I'm dispensing now, so Citadel's Black Wash. I'm going to apply this really thickly over the whole backpack just so the whole thing gets darkened because it is much lighter than I really wanted it to be. Now I'm going to begin lightening up the shoulder pads using the same color, cold grey, but not using a dry brush because there's too much green around them and other things I just don't want to mess up. So what I've done is I've taken the cold grey and just thinned it down with some water from the side of the wet palette, and I'm applying it so that it's simply thickest near the top of the shoulder, where light would be falling straight down from above, and kind of letting it feather out as I get further away from that point. Now see, it's not perfectly clean. There's kind of some brush strokiness to it and some colors build up. That's totally okay. What I'm doing now is I'm mixing some black in with the cold gray to get an interim shade. And I'm going to use it as a go-between color to smooth out the transition between the cold gray and the black. I'm going to do this process maybe two or three times until I've got a really nice smooth transition from the cold gray all the way out to the black. And it's just a matter of adding in a little more black each time. And also maybe adding a little more water so it becomes more and more glaze-like until I just really like the result I've got in the end. You can see almost instantly that the transition is getting a lot smoother. You can see as I do this, the fact that there are brush strokes in it is a little bit evident, not because the paint is thick, but just the style I'm using isn't really super smooth. The more I continue this method though, the smoother it's going to get as I apply more and more variations of the gray to black transition. At this point I'm going almost straight black with just a little bit of water mixed in so it's quite thin and I'm going to kind of bring that up over the edge of the dark gray I just painted which will really help it meet with the black. It's also worth noting that in the next video I'm going to be doing a lot of freehanding on both shoulders so if there's a couple areas where the transition's not perfectly smooth it's probably not going to matter in the end because half of it's going to be covered up at a minimum. Finishing up the black highlights, I'm going to do a quick linear edge highlight across the top of the bolter body. Just using the same cold gray. Really just a standard Space Marine edge highlight that you've probably seen a million times before. Now the last thing I'm doing on this model today is going back to the Nuln Oil shade and applying it over all of the gunmetal areas. So that's all of the metal aspects of the bolter, the metal straps around the Space Marine's chest, etc. Now I also noticed that the original shade I applied to the miniature in the first video didn't really stick well between the miniature's fingers, so I'm going back between them with just a little bit of Nuln Oil to help them appear more distinct from afar. I don't want to apply it too thickly though, because I haven't really used black on any of the other green armor, and I don't want the fingers to look really weird and distinct. Now you can see here as I apply the Nuln Oil to the straps going across the Space Marine's chest, I'm also letting the Nuln Oil kind of spill over the strap, both to the top and bottom a little bit, to help outline it against the green. 
Finally, there's the different metal aspects of the backpack that haven't really had a good Nuln oil wash yet. Some of the little pipes kind of did because I hit them when I was darkening up the backpack from earlier, but I'm going to apply another wash to them as well just so that the details in them become more pronounced. And that's it for work on the salamander today. Between this and the next video, I'm going to spray this entire model with an anti-shine varnish just to kill the gloss on the black. In the next video, I'm going to be freehanding flames on one shoulder, the salamander emblem on another, and doing some general highlighting just to improve the overall appearance of the model. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.